Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. The BamaInsider.com staff is putting together a March Madness tournament bracket, and we're asking a simple question. Who is the greatest player under Nick Saban? Well, here's the bracket. We're going to talk more about the bracket at the end of this video. But before we do, let's break down the number one seeds in each quadrant. We're going to lead off a course with Tua Tongo Valoa. Years at Alabama 2017 through 2019. National titles won. Won in 2017 when he was just a freshman. College football offensive MVP in 2017. Heisman Trophy runner-up in 2018. Won the Maxwell Award in 2018. 7,442 yards with 87 touchdowns and just 11 interceptions. A rating of 199.4. I don't know if that will ever be duplicated again in Alabama. Next up, Jonathan Allen, the only defensive player to make it as a number one seed in our tournament. Years at Alabama 2013 through 2016, national titles won, won in 2015. SEC Defensive Player of the Year in 2016, Nagurski Award winner in 2016, Lombardi Award winner in 2016, Chuck Betnard Award in 2016. You're talking about an incredible career at Alabama as a defensive player. Three-time first team All-SEC from 2014 to 2016, 152 tackles with 28 sacks his career as a defensive player mind-blowing Alabama Alabama fans I know this I know they miss defensive players like Jonathan Allen all right moving on Next up, we're talking about former Alabama running back Derrick Henry. Years at Alabama 2013 to 2015. National titles won one in 2015. Heisman Trophy winner in 2015. Yeah, Alabama has two of them. Derrick Henry is one of them. Maxwell Award winner in 2015. Doak Walker Award winner in 2015. Walter Camp Award winner in 2015. Unanimous All-American in 2015. SEC Offensive Player of the Year in 2015. 3,591 yards and 42 touchdowns during his tenure at Alabama. And you look at what he's doing in the NFL for the Tennessee Titans. He continues to exude greatness. One of the top running backs ever, not only at Alabama, but one of the top running backs ever in college football. Derrick Henry is going to be very tough to beat in this tournament. All right, next up, former Alabama quarterback A.J. McCarron, years at Alabama, 2010 to 2013. National titles won, yeah, two. He won the BCS national title in 2012 and 2013, leading Alabama, some of their best all-time teams. Maxwell Award winner in 2013. Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner in 2013. First team All-American in 2013 as well. And when you look at the overall production of A.J. McCarron, 9,000 yards at Alabama, 77 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. I mean, this guy, you talk about production from a quarterback standpoint. This guy had the production, so he's a number one seed in our tournament. We're curious to see how far he can go in this tournament. Now let's take a look at the overall bracket. All right, here's a look at the overall bracket. And if you want to zoom in and kind of get a feel for each quadrant, you can go to BamaInsider.com. We're having fun with it, but let's break it down quadrant by quadrant. We, of course, want your feedback in the comment box. And, of course, you can go to BamaInsider.com to vote, social media feeds as well. Um, let's kind of just uh, walk you through this quadrant by quadrant. We'll start right here um, at the top left with Tua Tungo Valoa's bracket. He's the number one seed be taking on Lee Tiffin, who was a kicker for Alabama under Nick Saban. A lot of people say he was the top kicker that's ever been under Saban. Well, you guys can talk about it and read about it on BamaInsider.com. How about this number eight versus number nine matchup between Jalen Hurts and Calvin Ridley? You might think maybe Jalen Hurts is rated too low or seated too low. Well, we want to hear from you in the comment box. Taking on Calvin Ridley, one of Alabama's uh, most dominant wide receivers under Nick Saban, doing a great job with the Atlanta Falcons now. Number five, Chance Warmack taking on Devontae Smith at that 12 spot. A five versus 12 is always fun to look at when you look at March Madness basketball brackets and really any bracket in general. I just think the five versus 12 is always seems to be one that could potentially be an upset. And in this case, I think it will be Devontae Smith returning for a senior year at Alabama. Trent Richardson, how about him in the number four spot? I think he could be someone who really um, potentially gives maybe Tua or Jalen, whoever it is up at the top, a, a, a real run for this bracket. Um, other matchups, number six, Terrence Cody taking on Ryan Anderson, Marcel Darius taking on Irv Smith. And Irv Smith, I think, is a guy who could carry on a lot of momentum in this bracket just because I feel he might be a little bit of a fan favorite coming off um, a big year a couple seasons ago at Alabama, playing with the Minnesota Vikings. Could be interesting. Jonah Williams at the number seven spot taking on Damian Harris. Two guys relatively um, recent 
in terms of playing for Nick Saban. Jonah Williams, one of the best tackles to come out under Nick Saban. Very intelligent young man. Taking on another very intelligent young man in Damian Harris. Uh, curious to get your thoughts on that. 7 and 10 matchup. Those are always fun to talk about as well. CJ Mosley is at the number two seed taking on Greg McElroy. All right, let's 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 look at uh, the Jonathan Allen bracket. This, we're just having fun with it. Go to BamaInsider.com. We hope you guys are having fun too. Um, Jonathan Allen, the only number one seed that was a defensive player taking on Kevin Norwood TJ Yeldon up in this spot against Javier Arenas I really like that matchup at the 8-9 spot TJ Yeldon a very talented running back and then Javier Arenas I mean wow what a what a special teams threat right Barrett Jones taking on JK Scott JK Scott I like this 12-5 matchup right here because JK Scott probably the best punter ever not only under Nick Saban, I think like ever all time at Alabama, uh, Landon Collins taking on Henry Ruggs. That could be another matchup where you have a 13 defeating the number four spot. Henry Ruggs coming out with a ton of momentum after that NFL combine performance. I, I still get tripped out that he had a 42 inch vertical. Andre Smith taking on DJ Fluker at the six and 11. Julio Jones, he could be a guy who really runs the table on this bracket, taking on number 14, Kareem Jackson, Eddie Jackson at the number seven spot, taking on number 10 seeded, Courtney Upshaw, and then number two, Minka Fitzpatrick. Could you imagine if it gets to Minka Fitzpatrick versus Julio Jones, which I think it potentially will um, later on in this bracket. Wow, I, I really like this bracket. It's, it's pretty tough. So um, go on to BamaInsider.com, and of course, you can sound off in the comment box. We're just having fun with it. All right, let's look at the AJ McCarron bracket. He's taking on number 16 seeded Cyrus Jones. AJ McCarron is a guy with a ton of production at Alabama. A lot of people really like AJ McCarron. The number eight spot will be Reggie Ragland taking on Ashawn Robinson. At the number five spot, Jerry Judy will be taking on number 12 seeded Rashawn Evans. I think Jerry Judy is a guy that could potentially win this entire bracket. I mean, when you look at it, there's some great matchups in this bracket. So let's continue before we go on. Um, and talk about Jerry Judy, Reuben Foster taking on Najee Harris. That's an interesting matchup right there. The the Reuben the Missile Foster taking on Najee Hurdle Harris, right? That that's a great 413. Haha ha, Clinton Dix taking on Drake Kirkpatrick. Dante Hightower taking on Jake Coker. Ryan Kelly taking on Eddie Late. I could potentially see a lot of upsets in this bracket. Mark Ingram taking on Jalen Waddle. Now that matchup right there. Who do you guys who do you, who is I mean, because Jalen Waddle is a guy that we haven't even seen how great he could be. We know how great Mark Ingram was, but Jalen Waddle, I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. So that's where a bracket like this gets hard because you have a player like Jalen Waddle. I mean, in my opinion, I think Jalen Waddle could be the first non-running back from Alabama to win a Heisman Trophy. What do you think? I mean, I think he's that talented as a player if used properly. All right, let's go up to the top and check out. Um, the Derrick Henry bracket. Derrick Henry is going to be taking on Glenn Coffey at the number eight spot. You have OJ Howard and Tim Williams. That's a tough eight, nine matchup. Quentin Williams taking on Blake Sims. Obviously, Quentin Williams is going to have a lot of momentum being that he was a first round draft pick. Uh, Cam Robinson taking on Josh Jacobs. Now, I think when you look at that matchup, um, Josh Jacobs, I mean, it, it's not like he was the greatest running back at Alabama, but I think in the NFL, he certainly could be a guy who really continues to blossom. I mean, he had a monster scene with the Raiders and um, wasn't overly used to Alabama. That was the thing with Josh Jacobs, but now he's doing work. D uh, Milliner taking on Deron Payne. That's a good uh, that's a good matchup right there. I think Deron Payne could potentially edge him out. Rolando McClain taking on Kenyon Drake. Mark Barron taking on Marlon Humphrey. And then Amari Cooper, I think, definitely could win this entire region um, taking on Robert Lester. So that's the overall bracket and how it's going to work again, just to kind of give you the overview is we're going to write about these particular matchups on BamaInsider.com. We want your feedback. So you can go to the website, you can vote for the particular matchup, and then we're just going to advance the players just like you do in March Madness. We're going to have fun with it. We're, we're going to have the staff right back on BamaInsider.com. We'll bring it to the YouTube channel. We'll bring it to our podcast. We'll talk about some of the matchups as we go forward. What are some of the, the tougher matchups to talk about? I mean, I can already see some matchups in that second round that I can't wait to talk about. Tua Tonga Valoa taking on Jalen Hurts and just, uh, you know, some of this, the, the quarterback battle. You know, who was the greatest player? Yeah, I think production-wise, <laughs> Tua certainly did his thing. But, I mean, Jalen Hurts did his thing at Alabama. So I want to um, certainly dive into it and just have fun with it. Um, I know you need the coverage. You guys still want to talk football. We're going to talk football. Alabama might not be having spring practice just yet. It's just postponed. It's not canceled. But we're going to have fun with it on BamaInsider.com. Please go and vote. And definitely we want to get your comments inside the comment box. 
Reporting to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, this is the Crimson Tide's greatest of greats under Nick Saban and Kyle Anderson reporting to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Catch you guys soon. Have fun with it. See you back at BamaInsider.com.